Hello, hello, Dr. Ebert here. Let's uh, do some EKG rating using the famous 12-pack method. This is our favorite down here at Valley Baptist Family Practice. And we use it every day. Alright, away we go. First, we're going to deal with the rate. Right, the rate. Normal is between 60 and 100. Greater than 100 is tachycardia. Too fast. Bradycardia, less than 60. Too slow. All right. It's the rate, the rhythm. Uh, four things I want you to look at when you look at rhythm. First, look at the P waves. Is there a P before every QRS? The PR interval. How long does it take for the P to get to the QRS, if you will? Then the size of the QRS, and finally the R to R interval. These are complex topics as far as rhythm goes, but we're going to work our way through. And as you practice with EKGs, you'll, you'll get the idea. We'll get there. Not to sweat. Let's look at the PR interval. The PR interval. Look here. See at the bottom? PR. From the beginning of the P to the beginning of the QRS. That's called the PR interval. Now look at that QRS. That first little did so that downward deflection is the Q. The upward is the R. And then the downward at the end is the S. Then it tags into, that's the depolarization of the ventricle, by the way. And then the repolarization is the T wave. Okay, so we have the P, QRS, the T wave. The PR interval is from the beginning of the P to the beginning of the QRS. And that should be less than 0.21 or less than 5 or less little boxes. Remember, each box is 0.04. We're going to look at that again in just a minute. Here's the QRS, the interval from the beginning of the Q to the end of the S. That's a QRS interval. That should be less than 0 0.10. And then finally, the QT interval, beginning of the Q, way to the end of the T. That should be less than 0.44. Remember, there's a difference between men and women. Men typically run normally between 0.36, 0 0.40, women between 0.4 and 0.44. Okay, let's look at it just a little different way. Now, I put the EKG paper behind here. Let's go over this again. Look at the arrow. Every little bitty box is 0 0.04 milliseconds. The large box, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now let's go over here. Here we go. From dark to dark. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Ah, dark to dark. 0 0.04 times 5. 0.2. Okay, just to give you an idea of the graph paper or the EKG paper. Now going on the y-axis, going upward, each little box is one millimeter. Each little box is one millimeter. Each little box on the x-axis horizontally, 0 0.04 milliseconds. Totally cool. Okay, so once again, PR interval, the beginning of the P to the beginning of the QRS should be less than one, two, three, four, oh, that's normal. Should be less than five or less boxes. How about the QRS? The QRS in the beginning of the where the Q starts. Remember, not every time you won't always see a Q. Some leads don't have a normal Q. Let's look over here. From the beginning of the Q to the end of the S, one box, two box. Ooh, how normal. 0 0.08. Each little box is 0 0.04. Two of those, 0 0.08. We're getting this math down, okay? Math 101. Now, you don't want me to be teaching you math, that's for sure. But so far, we're okay. We, we can handle this. Finally, the QT intervals. We're doing intervals. We did great rhythm. Now we're sloshing together the PR, the QRS, and the QT interval. So look at the QT. That's that lower arrow. Watch my little arrow here. Beginning of the Q to the end of the T. Let's count. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine boxes. Nine boxes times 0 0.04 is 0 0.36. Normal QT interval. Sweet, you're getting this down. I can tell. Okay, this is a concept that takes a little work. Remember, the axis is um, Eindhoven's triangle. It's based on the positive and negative uh, leads of these electrodes. You know that we put on people's bodies. Right arm, left arm, right leg, left leg, and then V1, 2, 3, 4, 5.
five, six. Okay, wait, this is so cool. Right now we're just working on the limb leads. We're not going to do the chest leads. We're talking limb leads. Now let's look at this really cool axis here. Look, lead one. It's always right at zero. It's going across the chest to the left. Oh, look at that. So we know that lead one tells you about the lateral. It's a lateral lead. It tells you about the lateral left ventricle. Really important because you'll see in the blue here, you see the blue shaded area? When you add up all the vectors, and that's what an axis is doing, you're adding up all the electrical vectors and saying if we add up all the vectors, most of the heart muscle should be over here between negative 30 and plus 110, on here plus 90. But Marriott, the guru of American EKGs, plus 110 to negative 30, normal axis. That means if you add up all the different ways the vectors move, one big vector moves toward the biggest part, the fattest part of the heart, the left ventricle. Kind of makes sense when you think about it. So again, let's look at lead one is there at zero degrees. Lead two is down here at plus 60. Watch my moving arrow. Lead three down here at the foot, plus 120. And we'll stay down here, AVF, F, foot. Okay, these are the inferior leads. Two, AVF, and three. Two, three, and AVF. They look at the inferior part of the heart. Oh, cool, this is starting to make sense. AVL, left arm, and one, look at that, That's those are the high lateral leads. They look at the lateral part of the heart. And then the outlier, AVR, right arm, <clears throat> never use it. Sorry, AVR, your waist, over there at negative 150. Normal axis between negative 30 plus 110. If you add all the axes together, they should head in that direction. If it's beyond negative 130 in this area, it's a left axis deviation. See right there? If it's beyond plus 110, it's a right axis deviation. And they'll all, you know, right axis up to here, AVR, left axis, usually we say up to negative 90, maybe a little beyond. Axis. Study that a bit, it may help you. P wave morphology. Next up, only two places to look for P waves lead 2 and lead V1. And here's a little chart. I really like this. Normal sinus rhythm. Look at that sweet little P wave. And then lead one, either upright uh, or downward. Hey, little stinker, pardon me. Right atrial enlargement. If in lead two, it's a really peaked P wave, that suggests the right atrium is stretched out. And then finally, left atrial enlargement down at the very bottom here. Look in lead two, we see this broad notched P wave or a biphasic P wave, a box up and a box down over in lead B1. Okay, so we're looking most of the time, I just want you to get used to the normal morphology of the P waves. Next up, T waves. T waves, remember we have the P wave, QRS, and then the T. The T is the repolarization of the ventricle. There is a nice normal upward T wave. Sorry, this thing is having hiccups. There's a normal uh, upright T wave. Here's a biphasic T wave. What does that mean? Uh, sometimes it's a normal variant. There's a notched T wave, broad T wave. You might see in uh, some with hypokalemia. Ooh, flat T wave, low potassium hypokalemia. Now look at it. There's your hyperkalemia. Look at that peak T wave. Ooh, that's ugly. Uh, some repolarization variant uh, seen in bundle branch blocks. Okay, now look next door. The ischemia. It's a symmetrical downward or an inverted T wave. See that, baby? It's symmetrical. Both down. Look at this. It goes down and up, and it's very symmetrical. The strain pattern, backward check mark of left ventricular hypertrophy. And that prolonged, look at that long QT. Someone that might have gotten the quinidine or might have some hypomagnesemia. Next up, ST segments. Again, there's the P wave. The P comes to the QRS. Then the S to the T is the ST segment. Okay. How do you determine what's normal? See this red arrow pointing to the PR? The PR 
segment is the baseline, or what we call, truth I call the PQ junction, but here they're calling the PR. The PQ junction, that line between the P and the Q, is what's called the baseline. The ST segment should be at that same level. Okay? If it's a millimeter up, that's ST elevation. Millimeter down, ST depression. Let's look at it. Here's the PQ junction. And look at this baby. It's up one millimeter, two millimeter, three. Whoa, it's way up there. And it's coving. Now it notice it's starting to balloon up. Sign of myocardial injury. And over here, ST depression, there's the PQ junction right there. Now look, we're down one, two, three. Uh, here by, con by convention, you have to go over two blocks, 0 0.08 over, then look at where the ST depression is. And you're down about three millimeters. That's a sign of uh, ischemia, uh, what we look for in treadmill stress testing. Those are the ST segments, uh, the Q waves. And now remember, sometimes Q waves are normal. When are they abnormal? When they're a block wide and deep or greater than a third of the size of the R wave. Look at these babies. These are huge. Now remember, an infarct requires that contiguous leads be affected. Here's the inferior leads, 2, 3, ABF. They all have Q waves. That is an old inferior infarct. If it was just in lead 3, no Qs in 2, no Qs in ABF, <coughs> nothing. You've got to have at least two what we call contiguous leads, leads that are next to each other. 2, 3, AVF, inferior. 1, AVL, lateral. Uh, V1 and 2, V1 and 2, anterior. Correction, V1 and 2, septal. Watch, I'm tricking you. V1 and 2, septal. 2 and 3, anterior. 1 and 2, 3 and 4. Uh, anterior and five and six lateral. Okay, we'll go over that again. V1 and 2 are septal, three and four anterior, five and six lateral. It's getting old. R wave progression. Notice in V1 through V6, the R wave should get bigger, 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 and then it kind of levels off a little bit. Okay, that's normal R wave progression. And finally, voltage. That is the size. Here, there's a couple of examples here. Uh, the size of that R wave. Okay, the size here is 7 millimeters. Remember, each little box is a millimeter. And here, uh, let's go over to uh, V1. There's 5, 10, 15, 20. That's, uh, that's going to be a, a big S wave. Look over here at the R wave. 5, 10, 15, 20, almost 25. That's going to be a sign of left ventricular hypertrophy. Those, there's some high voltage here in this abnormal EKG. That's voltage. It's the size of either the S wave or the size of the R wave. Okay? Give you some idea. It's called voltage. And when it gets big like that, watch out for left ventricular hypertrophy or right ventricular hypertrophy. Okay, we've just uh, spent some time going over the 12 pack of the EKG. Get out there and practice. Work at it step by step. And God bless you as you do it. Bye now.